Hi, this is Dean Miller back with another video of the significance of the life of Jesus. This is going to be in Matthew 8, 28 through 34. Jesus sends demons into a herd of pigs. I'm also going to include some of Mark's passages in it because he explains it a little more in detail. So this is once again, this is in the NLT Bible. Jesus sends demons into a herd of pigs. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of the Gadarenes, two men were who were possessed by demons met him. They lived in a cemetery and were, were so violent that they could go through that area. No one could go through that area. They began to screaming at him, Why are you interfering with us, son of God? Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance, so the demons begged, if you cast us out, send us into the herd of pigs. All right, go, Jesus commanded. So the demons came down, came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down a steep hillside into the lake and drowned it in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby towns, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone. So, verse 8, it says, when Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of Gadarenes, two men who were possessed by demons met him. They lived in a cemetery and were so violent that no one could go through that area. So as soon as they got off the boat from the calming of the storm, they get into this region of Gardenes where they were met by two possessed men. They lived in the cemetery and they were violent where no one could get through the area. In Mark, it says that whenever they were put into chains and shackles, he would snap the chains from their wrists and smash the ch shackles. Day and night, he wandered among the burial caves and in the hills, howling and cutting himself with sharp stones. This guy was really messed up. Demons were trying to even destroy his body. So this guy was so strong and powerful. This was a real strong demon, and he was very disturbed. So in verse 29 it says, They began screaming at him, Why are you interfering with us, son of God? Have you come to torture us before God's appointed time? So this was the answer to the questions that the disciples asked in verse 27 after Jesus calmed the storm. It said, They asked, The disciples were amazed, Who is this man? They asked, Even the winds and the waves obey him. So here God sends demons to call out who Jesus really was, the Son of God. Because they begin screaming, why are you interfering with us, Son of God? So God sent a demon to tell the disciples who Jesus actually was. So in Mark 5 it says that the demons ran to meet Jesus and bowed, screamed and shrieked, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? So even, even the demons bowed to the Lord. And the demons knew that their time was limited, but they knew they didn't know if it was up yet. So they were wondering why Jesus was there bothering them. They were actually afraid that Jesus was going to end their time on earth before the time that they, they were to have. So that just shows you that even, even demons listen to Jesus and they're scared and, and they bow to him knowing that he is the true son of God. So in verse 30 it says, There happened to have been a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. So in Mark it says there's around 2,000 pigs. So in verse 31 it says, So the demons begged, If you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. Why do you think that they wanted to go into the herd of pigs? Probably because they wanted the people that... See, that was their big commodity in that area is the, the selling of hogs. So they knew that the demons knew that if Jesus put them into the hogs, that they would jump into the lake and drown themselves, and it would turn all the people of the city against Jesus. So that's why they wanted to go into the into the pigs. So Jesus said, "All right, go." Jesus commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned them in water. So Jesus didn't have to do anything. He just said with his word, go. And they actually left the pigs, or left the men and went to the pigs. But Jesus knew that these two men were more important than 2,000 animals. And he knew that. So he, he actually sacrificed them animals to save the two, the two men that were here that desperately needed his help. 
So in verses 33 and 34, it says, The herdsmen fled to the nearby town, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. Then the entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone. So this whole town came out to meet Jesus, and instead of listening to what he had to say, they chose the pigs over Jesus. They actually sent Jesus away because of all their possessions that they lost. So these men actually picked material possessions over the Savior, the one the one perfect lamb that came to, to save them. They turned him away. In Mark it says the men begged Jesus to be able to go with them. The man that he cured, they begged Jesus to be able to go with them because I think they were afraid that they were going to get repossessed and they didn't want to feel that way again. But Jesus told them it was okay. And he told them to go home and tell their family everything the Lord did for you and how merciful he has been. So Jesus told them that it was going to be okay and that he wanted them to go home and testify. He wanted them to give them his account of what happened so people could could glorify God for what he did to these two men. So in conclusion, accept Jesus over possessions. Don't pick your possessions over Jesus. These people shut Jesus out because they're afraid at what he did and what it had cost them. Don't pick pigs over Jesus. Jesus knew knew the town would reject him, but he knew that the two men he was talking to were more important than a herd of pigs. Plus he showed his disciples that even demons know who he has, who he is, and they are terrified of him. Even evil bows to Jesus. And God uses demons to reveal to his disciples who Jesus really was, the Son of God. In our lives, people really need to know who Jesus really is, the Son of God, and take the Bible seriously. This this world is coming, becoming more evil day by day, and we can see it happening just right before our eyes. Things ain't getting any better. And Jesus will come back the second time. And one of the verses that really stuck with me is in Matthew 10, 33, it says, but everyone who denies me, Jesus said, everyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. So don't go around here denying Jesus here on earth because when that day of judgment comes and you go before God, Jesus will deny you in front of his Father. And your life is not going to be good. This is a short life that we spend here on earth, but eternity is forever. And it says that people who die who believe in God will rest. But people who who don't believe in God and die and get thrown into the burning lake of fire and sulfur, they'll never rest. You know how it is when you can't sleep and you're up all the time and you, you just can't sleep, you have insomnia or you have times where you can't get any rest? That's what it's going to be like for eternity. You won't be able to rest. And that's not the way you want to be in life. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Without him, we ha we have absolutely nothing. Our possessions, everything we work for, everything we strive to get, the money we have saved and the, the things that we buy and the things that we think is important when we die, none of that comes with us. The only thing that comes with us is our soul. And what side of, what side do we want to be on? Do we want to be in heaven or do we want to be suffering in a lake of burning sulfur? So that's a decision that we need to make because... God's here for us. All we got to do is read this Bible. The Word is here. Go to church. Listen to people's testimonies. And get that joy in your heart that Jesus can bring. Give hope. Because if without hope, what do we have? So that's all I have this week. Thank you for listening to my videos. Please like them on Facebook and YouTube. Um, subscribe to my channel on YouTube if you want to. Uh, comment, please. I like to hear comments. Um, maybe tips on how I could do these videos better or if they're getting worse. So please uh, share this video if you can. Let's try to get the word out to everybody that we can. And thank you for listening to my videos. Everybody have a blessed week. Amen.